across the country and around the world. They're kids with dreams, coaches with drive. While some skate for greatness and others for the love, they come here to make it happen. This is Detroit's Winning Edge. This is the place where champions are made, and this is the place where dreams come true. Good evening, I'm Robbie Timmons at the Detroit Skate Club in Bloomfield Hills. 60 minutes from now, stars from this arena will be taking center stage in what can only be described as the Super Bowl of figure skating, the World Championships in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tara Lipinski and Todd Eldridge have both won world titles, and tonight, someone else from this club could take the gold. For months, the skaters have been training right here, and tonight you'll get a rare inside look at their lives, how champions are made, and you'll see the wild side of this compl complex. Hi, Todd, how are you? Good. Yeah, looking good out there. Thanks. Thanks. Now, I thought Don was going to be here. Oh, well, no. He told me he was going to be here. He said, I'm going to show you what I can do. Now, he's not here. You think here. Shane can skate? That's what he said. He said, you know, I'm going to come out there. I'm going to show you a thing or two. And, uh, you know, i got to get back to my training now. But, uh, you know, <laughs> if you ever see him, tell him. I think he's dogging me, but, you know, tell him <laughs> I'm waiting for him. Thanks, Todd. Uh, thanks. Hey, Shane. Shane, <sighs> did you hear that? Yeah, Robbie, of course I heard it. So it was a little mix-up. I'm down here at the Joe Louis Arena. He's up at the skating club. I didn't know. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but... Hey, you don't worry. Oh, worry. How could you skate? No, you oh, can't terrible. skate. Oh, that's what we mean. Oh, you, we heard you can't ski at all. We, we mean you hurt. We over here. So you can go around so and get a total ankle the chair. Right there. Oh, like you oh, wings, right. you know, you yeah. big-time hockey no. players. Yeah. You guys think you yeah. can skate. We were like that when we were five, not when we were 40. You can't skate. I got a coach, and it isn't one of you guys. It's Tara Lipinski. Ever hear of her? Yeah, 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 I'm not sure at all. Gold medal, Olympics, oh, yeah. figure skating, oh, yeah. skate yeah. circles around you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. These guys think they can skate. I've got Tara. You don't believe me? Let's take a look at this tape. And now listen, I need a skating tip or two. I mean, you know, give me some of your vast experience. Give me, give me something that you know is going to work for me. I need practice, like I said before. All right, other than practice. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Just go out there and see what happens. See what happens? No, no triple triples, not, not on the first day. <laughs> you don't think I can handle a triple triple on the first day? No, I don't about, think About so. like uh, one of those toe loop things. <laughs> Maybe, we'll see. There you go, some tips from Tara. You guys impressed now? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Well, she's a good coach, yeah. but how about you? Yeah. Yeah. What? Material, <laughs> no, no, what about you? Can you do a triple triple? Triple what? Yeah, right. Can you do a sow cow? That she was teaching me, maybe. Double toe loop. Come on, Dandy. I don't know. Yeah. Larry Moe and Curly. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's what I got right here. Larry Moe and Curly. Hey, Robbie, back to you. I'll be back later with these three Red Wings. Okay, thanks, John. In the meantime, back to our pregame show, if you will. We have a lot on tap here at the Detroit Skate Club. Our team tonight includes Channel 7's Mike Huckman, Kimberly Craig, and Sandy Hang. Together, we'll tell you how this club produces world champions while at the same time teaches your kids to skate. We'll also explore life on the edge here as we strap you into a pair of speed skates for a hair-raising ride on the ice. But coming up next, it takes two to tango. You'll meet this pint-sized pair, a tiny Corville and Dean, and this couple whose love for each other has helped them shine on the ice while surviving a tragedy that was national news. Back in a moment. Detroit's Winning Edge, brought to you by Campbell's Soup Champions on Ice, coming to Joe Louis Arena Saturday, May 2nd. Welcome back to the Detroit Skating Club. Very quickly, I want you to take a look at this facility. It is tucked inside an industrial park in Bloomfield Hills. It's a mammoth complex, three full-sized rinks, which every day are bustling with activity from before dawn until well after dark. On many afternoons and some mornings, this is the scene on the middle rink. Dozens of children taking their first steps on the ice. In one week, 1,000 kids come through here. It's part of the club's Learn to Skate program, which is open to the public. Perhaps somewhere out there is the next Tara Lipinski or future Corville and Dean. We found the couple on the rink next door. Charlie Sharp. 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 Head up high. They're barely big enough to see over the boards, yet 10-year-old Charlie White and 11-year-old Merrill Davis are giants here at the Detroit Skating Club. They've come along a lot faster than I would have thought. Uh, that's to their own 
merit. They um, work extremely hard even when they're not in a lesson. It could mean Olympics someday. While the Olympics are a long way off, a lot of people have their eyes on these ice dancers who teamed up just nine months ago. Coach Seth Chaffetz thought they'd be a good match. Um, um, well, we didn't know we were skating so hard. We decided we were just going to... Yeah, yeah, we skated together just to try out, and then yeah. Seth thought we looked good together. At first, there were some doubts. The first time we saw them skate, we weren't really sure. <laughs> no. It was really, it was not, it was a real... The first time they weren't... Experienced the first time. They weren't too great. Um, we trip over each other's feet She time. would push, then I would push. Stuff like not, that. like, in synchronized. Meryl was not really a dancer. She did a little bit, but really wasn't a dancer. Charlie did solo dance. Mm -hmm. Well, we got more synchronized, and we got used to the stuff, and used to each other, and it got a lot easier. So far, exceeded anyone's expectations. Really? I think even their own. In a few short months, this pint-sized pair has skated circles around kids in Michigan, winning most of the competitions they've entered. And last month, they went national, taking a silver medal at the Junior Olympics in Dallas, Texas. Despite all that, Charlie refuses to focus purely on figure skating. This kid plays other sports. He's a terrific hockey player. In fact, he's one of the stars on a team that just won the state championship. So, Charlie, I know everybody's probably asked you this your whole life. Which sport do you like better, the figure skating stuff or the hockey? Um, neither, really. I just like both the same. I guess I like, oh, I guess I like one more when I'm doing it. They're both real fun. Yeah, so many times, how many times do people ask you that? Oh, all the time. He wants to be the first person to go to the Olympics playing hockey and as a figure skater. But at the same time, he just lives day to day. Day to day, Meryl and Charlie live fairly normal lives. Both are very serious students in regular schools. You'll find Meryl in class at West Maple Elementary, and Charlie is a standout at Roper School. Generally, they hit the rink after school, and while they practice, their mothers bond. You can't make a kid look as happy and have the fun that we see them having you can't make that happen. We all take it one day at a time. We love watching them. It's fun because they're happy and smiling. And so. anything more than one day at a time becomes overwhelming. Right. Merrill and Charlie are often on the ice with two of their heroes. Jessica Joseph and Charlie Butler are Olympic ice dancers who have come a long way in a short time. You shook my nerves and you rattled my brain. Too much love drives a man insane. You broke my wheel, but what a thrill. To see them on the ice today, winning top honors around the world, you'd think Jessica Joseph and Charlie Butler were a born ice dancing pair. Once upon a time, the showy couple were just two shy kids, and it was a matchmaker that got them together. I was looking for the partner for Jessica, and not so many boys around, and I thought some boy was skating in Kalamazoo, and we set up to kind of try out during the competition in, in Lansing. I had no idea who he was. I mean, while I was competing, I was looking around, oh my gosh, who is it? You know, I never knew who it was. And I was trying to watch all the competitions to see, you know, who Charlie Butler was. And Jessica was nine and uh, Charlie was 12. I didn't meet him until after I, I had finished competing and I stepped off the ice and Igor introduced me. Just goes, wow, what a good looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> and we got back on the ice and we started warming up the Canasta Tango. This is the video of their first skate together in 1991. I enjoyed skating with her at first because uh, it was this cute little girl, you know, who I had seen and, you know, I had started my interest in, in, <laughs> in women and, of course, I enjoyed skating with someone who was cute. Charlie may have had fun, but he didn't know what he was doing. Charlie would keep forgetting steps and the thing was, 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 was quite funny. He had forgotten it. So on the warm-up, I helped him remember the steps and whatnot. It was obviously a little rocky. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting first skate. I think that, uh, you know, she was helping with this, me with the steps, and I was helping her with the partnership because, you know, this was one of her first, you know, times partnering someone. So I think that, you know, that, that kind of uh, showed us that we could work together in the future. While they eventually hit their stride on skates, it was a little tougher off the ice. I was embarrassed to go up and talk to him, but he was even more embarrassed. Like, 
there weren't that many words at all. <coughs> like, hi, hi. This kid's came a long way, too, in, in, in the six years. 15-year-old Jessica and 18-year-old Charlie are now among the best young ice dancers in the world. They won the U.S. Junior Dance Championships in 1996 and 1997, and this year became the first couple from the U.S. to win the World Junior title. The pair also skated for the U.S. in Nagano, Japan. And it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. It was, you know, you can't really imagine going to the Olympics. It's it's something that every athlete dreams of, and only a few get the opportunity to go. Jessica and Charlie are now focusing on the Worlds and other titles in preparation for Salt Lake City in 2002. Oh, and in case you're wondering, are Jessica and Charlie more than just skating partners? Have they ever dated? What? <laughs> you know. <laughs> that gave the answer right there. You just say what? <laughs> no. We haven't. We, we've gotten along pretty well, you know, throughout, you know, our, our close to seven years skating together. Um, considering probably we've gotten along better than most brother and sisters do. And I think that in itself is an accomplishment. <laughs> if Jessica and Charlie are the new kids on the block, you could say Elizabeth Puncelon and Jared Swallow are the deans of ice dancing here. Well, here are the leaders and reigning U.S. champions, Elizabeth Puncelon and Jared Swallow. They've been married for two and a half years, and that closeness and intimacy has helped their skating tremendously. Generally, other people say that since we've been married, they've noticed uh, more of a togetherness in our skating. And I think it's only natural with the years together and the uh, closeness that you have over the years, and you move more as one. Princeton's childhood, it took Liz and Jared quite a few years to realize their fate. The first problem? Liz was skating with somebody else. So Jared had to make a move. So I kind of had to uh, drop the hint that I wanted her for my partner, which I did. And they split up and we paired up. The year was 1989, and at first it was all business. But slowly, things began to change. I think it just happened naturally. It was always kind of uh, a friendship from when we were real young. But to working together in that business kind of relationship, I think, uh, was important to start with. We knew how to work together first, and then uh, the romance just kind of developed after that. Liz and Jared went to the altar in 1993, and one year later faced the biggest test of their lives. We had just gotten married, uh, won the national championships. And then, the unthinkable. Right in the middle of the euphoric dream life they were living, Elizabeth Punselman and her new husband, Jared Swallow, are crushed by the murder of her father, Dr. Ernesto Poncelin, a well-respected and much-loved surgeon, was stabbed to death as he slept in his bed early Friday night. Investigators there have arrested his son, 20-year-old Ricky, whose drug addiction had caused the family tension and pain for several years. It comforts me to know that he's, he's with God today, and God will take care of us, and he's watching over us. You never expect, as a young married couple or as young people, to deal with something that tragic. Um, fortunately, we had each other. And I think it, it had taken us, really, the next four years until the next Olympics to feel like we could work our way through it. It's just very difficult. The tragedy certainly strengthened their relationship, a relationship which is tested every day on the ice. It's a delicate balance. It really is. And you, you, we're always learning still about communication and... Uh, not assuming that uh, one knows something, uh, you know, keeping the lines of communication open, uh, both on the ice and off the ice. The most important part of who we are and, and um, our relationship definitely comes first, and we work hard to make that priority. Together, Liz and Jared have become one of the best ice dancing couples in the world. They are five-time U.S. national dance champions and two-time Olympians. Liz and Jared will turn pro after the world championships in Minnesota but Metro Detroit will remain their home. They'll continue to train at the DSC, and they'll continue to inspire up-and-coming skaters. Liz and I, we just try and set a good example, good work, show good working habits and uh, a good working relationship on the ice, and, and, and that's hopefully will carry over into the younger kids. Elizabeth, Jared, Jessica, and Charlie are all coached by a man named Igor Spielband. When he starts to do a little more expression, you start to look stiff. You have to try to add the body. 
During the Cold War, he was a superstar in the Soviet Union, a standout in the Red Army Skating Club. Coming up, you'll hear about his life behind the Iron Curtain and why he left Russia to teach here. There's a skater at Jolo Serena who's waiting for his turn on the ice, his big moment. Hey, Don, do you have your routine nailed down yet? Yeah, Todd, I'm making plenty of progress. Don't worry about me at all. In fact, I'm even getting some tips from your little gal pal, Tara, you know, gold medal winner, the only woman that can do that triple-triple. Speaking of triple-triples, if you don't know what a triple-triple is, here's an explanation. And now coming up is her triple-triple combination. The first skater to ever do a triple loop, triple loop combination. Watch the landing right there and the step up in a, a little bit of a turn. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. Back that up. You got to slow it down. Now she takes off backwards and has to land backwards. All right, here you go. It's three spins in the air. There is one right there. And now two and three. And then she does it again. Count them as she goes right back up. One, two, three. That is a triple, triple. We are back with Matthew and Mike and Kurt. What do you think? We see someone do triple, triple. That's pretty impressive stuff. Huh? It is very impressive. Uh, I agree. Very it's impressive. unbelievable. Did you guys ever try anything like that when you were little? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think I could even try to attempt something like that. Not even now, right? I mean, it'd be too dangerous. Practice shooting a fuck in the net first. <laughs> When you guys are flipping over like that, it's some guy coming after you with elbows yeah, flying, right? It makes you flip over like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you usually land on your head. You don't fall on your feet again. You don't land on your feet. All right, we're back with more on the uh, skating moves. And we'll also talk to the other Russian five when we continue. Stay with us. Detroit's Winning Edge, brought to you by the Chevy Malibu, the car you knew America could build. Genuine Chevrolet. Welcome back to Detroit's Winning Edge. Now, most of you are well aware of the five Russian skaters who play for the Red Wings, who helped them win the Stanley Cup right here on Joe Louis Arena ice last year. They just rocked this place with the rest of the Wings. You probably are not aware of another group of Russian skaters who skate at the Detroit Skating Club. And they could also be known as the Russian Five. In the bustling Detroit Skating Club, they blend into the crowd, coaching, skating, laughing, joking. You have to show them, look at me, I'm gonna do triple throw, look at me, I'm the best, here we go. From afar, you'd never know what they went through to get here. I think I survived a um, country who really didn't like me um, as a human being. Natasha Hasi was a skating star in Russia who cringes now at the thought of the training she endured. It was like a military uh, organization. It's a, it's a production line, it's a factory. You a little bit have some mistakes, you're out of there. For 10 years I was a member of the Russian national team and I went to European championships in the world and I made the Olympic team and um, there was a funny story. Uh, Russian Federation decided not to um, spend extra money, knowing that I'm not going to get probably a medal. And um, they just killed my dream. That was in 1980. Natasha eventually took a coaching job here and met her husband. Her dream now is to help develop new champions. You, you have to then pick him up. It's got to be a little more. More dramatic. Huh? It's the same for coach Igor Spielbond, a star for Russia's Red Army Club in the 70s and 80s. He almost didn't make the cut as a kid. I wasn't a very good freestyle skater, I guess. I wasn't promising enough for the standard for that time. And I uh, wasn't very friendly with the jumps, I guess. I could jump, I couldn't land. <laughs> So Igor switched to ice dancing and became one of the best in Russia. I went to junior world three times and moved to senior. And I, I won the Cup of Russia in senior. I turned pro, started to skate with the Russian All-Stars. And um, we've been touring with Dora and Dean. During that tour in 1989, Russia was in mass upheaval. And Igor decided it was time for a change. We were in New York and um, we just didn't come back to Moscow with the tour and uh, we was looking for the job in this country with a teaching somewhere and the Detroit Skating Club was the first club who offered. 
Igor came with his wife Veronica for her watching young skaters here also brings back memories of her years as a champion pair skater in Russia. You always um, think if you're not good enough, you can be thrown out from the club or, you know, be just like a trash. As a coach, Veronica is now sending a different message. When I'm teaching here, I'm teaching, I'm trying to teach exactly opposite way. So I'm trying to be soft, but I'm trying to uh, be firm at the same time, which is sometimes hard to be firm and gentle. <laughs> the Spielbahn's move here to Detroit was a good one. Here, Igor has become one of America's top ice dancing coaches, along with partner Elizabeth Coates. Among their students are two Olympic pairs, Jared Swallow and Elizabeth Punsalon, and Jessica Joseph and Charlie Butler. Igor also teaches fellow Russian Peter Chernichev. The 27-year-old came here two years ago to train with partner Naomi Lang. This club, this place is uh, very, has very strong coaching staff, and Igor and Liz are doing a great job. Off the ice, Peter turns to another Russian for a different kind of coaching. Marina Sheffer was a top ballerina in the former so Soviet Union, so who now teaches skaters at the DSC. Same. I'm not talking about where they stroke and where they jump. I don't interfere with that, but everything else is, is very much similar to ballet experience. I guess in the United States, if you really wanted to do something, you will always be able to do something. As long as you put your effort in it, your time on it, you will always get what you want. Now there's a behind the scenes star at the Detroit Skating Club that you have got to meet. His name is Fred Martin. If you need your skates sharpened, this is the guy. He takes care of Todd. He takes care of Tara. He's going to take care of me. I had an appointment with Fred for 1030 in the morning, but I got bumped by another skater. Not just any skater, mind you. I got bumped by Tara. Hey, wait a second. Tell me about this guy. How important was he to winning this gold medal with you? Oh, extremely. Um, your skates have to be in good condition to go out there and do what you have to do, and Fred was great. And you're working on a new pair here? Is that the deal? <laughs> yeah, I don't like two skates. These aren't the ones that you won the gold medal in now, is it, Tara? Yeah. These are the ones? These are. These are the... These wait, are the wait a second. You're telling me that you're going to give up these skates and won the gold medal for those? I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because they're so broken down. I don't want to get hurt with them. All right. But there's maybe a gold medal on them a few years from now, huh? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, you did a great job on these, Fred. Yeah. A lot of times, too. See, see this right here? This is the, the track record of sharpenings on them. Yeah. I date it each time that I sharpen it. After Fred took care of Tara, it was my turn. What we're doing for you is what I also call kind of a granny grind, you know. So a granny grind. Granny grind. So we take it easy on you. Don't want you to go out there and kill yourself. All right. The end result here is this is going to be nice and smooth, but this and this, the edge part, is going to be like razor sharp. Yeah, it'll be razor sharp. Now tell me this. When Todd puts on his skates, or Tara puts on her skates, and you've just sharpened them, they can almost tell instantly whether it's right for them, correct? Absolutely. Now, how, how is that possible? I don't understand. These, you know, it's the old princess in the pea story. These people are sensitive to the most minute detail of difference. And uh, I guess one of the, the critical factors and the reasons that they would, they want to stick with the same person for the sharpening is so that they know it's going to be the same time after time after time. And it's not, I don't want to say overblowing the issue to say that if it's not correct, it could mean the difference in winning or not winning a gold or a silver or a bronze. Easy. Easy. Yeah, yeah, easy. So Fred's a pretty important guy. <laughs> man has a surgeon's touch. Yeah, let's see how we're doing here. Oh, well, we're getting closer there. We've got to check, make sure that the edge, oh, yeah. Oh, looking good. Looking good. Yeah, a little hard to tell with that uh, price tag up there. <laughs> or whatever that is. Uh, it's just some manufacturer's yeah. guarantee sticker, that's all. <laughs> After some more fine-tuning and a few finishing tricks, Fred presented his masterpiece. Well, there you go.
You ought to be able to take Todd on now. Mmm. Smooth as a baby's backside. But the edges. I could shave with the edges. Yeah. Thanks, Fred. Don, thank you, Fred. All right. All right. All right, I got my skates here. They're nice and sharp. I'm ready to go and try my stuff. I figured out the triple-triple, but there's a lot of other moves these skaters do. What are they all about? Well, for that, I grabbed champion skater Dan Hollander for a little skating 101. We hear a lot of terminology whenever there's a skating competition. I don't understand all of it, and you probably don't understand much of it either, but Dan Hollander, who's been skating for 21 years, knows all about it. Tell me about the three edge jumps. Well, you got three edge jumps. One takes off forward called the axle, and you're off your left foot. Skater lofts into the air and does one and a half rotations for a single. And then you have Sao Cao. Sao Cao. Sao Cao, which is going backwards. <laughs> Funny <laughs> names. Gliding on back inside edge, the skater takes off, launches in from there. And then you have a loop jump, which is the skater's on the back right outside edge, takes off, does the same thing. OK, there's also three toe jumps. Correct. All right, this time the skater uses the toe to assist them to loft in there, sort of like a pole vault. And you have your uh, triple toe or toe wally, depending on how you step down on which foot. Then you have your flip jump, which is on a back inside edge, picking in, and a back lutz, which is on a back outside edge, picking in. And sometimes the judges like to look to see which edge you're on, and it's pretty similar, and it's hard to do in both. Hey, I'm not so confused anymore. That's right. <laughs> so you got all that? Well, clearly I have a lot to learn in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. <laughs> I'm going to throw it back to my colleague, Robbie Timmons, for now. And, Robbie, I hope you're getting all this, because I want to see you skate, so one day maybe the two of us can be in some kind of a celebrity competition or something. Thanks, Don. I'll be practicing Great. much later. <laughs> we have a lot more from the Detroit Skating Club, though. We're going to be taking a look at Tara Lipinski's life after the Olympics and where she'll go from here. Coming up next, we're hanging out with Todd Eldridge, getting a glimpse of his wild side. Back in a moment. Welcome back. You know, when you talk to the kids around here, they will tell you one big reason they love the Detroit Skating Club is the fact they get to hang out with Olympic skaters. Across the board, Todd Eldridge is a favorite, a resident big brother. He also has quite a life off the ice. He's a five-time national champion and a world champion skater. But few people know that Todd Eldridge is also the defending champion of the Detroit Skating Club Foosball Tournament. When he needs to relax off the ice, you'll usually find Todd at the foosball table, tennis court, or on the links. <laughs> I'm a better golfer than I am a tennis player, but <laughs> neither one compares to how I am at skating. <laughs> you know, I, I try and do many different things, you know, and, and uh, you know, sometimes I just kind of like to go home and spend a little time at home because I don't get to see my house that very mu that much uh, because of the, the schedule that I keep with traveling. And as he travels around the world, even after possibly turning pro, Todd says he'll continue to make the Detroit Skating Club and suburban Detroit his home. I, I just like this area, you know, that, that, like I said about the arena, uh, you know, and all the people here. I've met a lot of people in this area, and, and you know, I've got a lot of friends here, and, and uh, you know, I'd like to stay here and, and you know, make, set my roots here, I guess you want to say. Todd came here with Richard Callahan, who's been his coach for 16 years. For the past couple of years, he's had to share him, though, with Tara Lipinski. But Todd, who has just one brother, and Tara, who's an only child, also share a special bond. We are good friends and, and uh, kind of like brother and sister. Uh, you know, and I think we try and, and uh, you know, help each other out. I've never had a sister. <laughs> I have a brother, but I've never had a sister. And, and uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of cool to, to have a little sister to joke around with and stuff. And the 26-year-old Eldridge has also become kind of a big brother figure to many of the young skaters around here. I mean, you can just sit down and talk with him. He's really sweet. I just thought he was a good role model and stuff, so it's just something to look forward to and hope that you're that good when you're older. You know, with myself here and Tara and, and Liz and Jared and, and Charlie and Jessica and all the, all the different skaters that are here that are skating well and, and doing well at, at nationals and internationals and worlds and Olympics now, um, you know, it, it, all the little kids can see that and they come in and they watch and... and I think they, they will get inspired to want to Tawana try and train a little harder. And with as many ups and downs as he's had in his long amateur skating career, Todd knows all about training hard. Still, over the years, he's managed to achieve great success and wealth, but he doesn't let any of it go to his head. 
So I think I'm, I'm just a different person. You know, I, I think, uh, um, you know, I, people, you, you have to be nice to people, you know, and, and that's the most important thing. Regardless, you know, you can go and you can win your medals and all that stuff and, and think that you're great at skating. But when it comes down to it, you know, fine, you're a good skater, but you have to be a nice person. But sometimes Todd can be too nice, says his coach, at least when Todd's on the ice in front of the judges. By nature, he's very reserved, yes. He probably um, would always walk two steps behind somebody else uh, and give them the limelight. Um, I, I really just, for Todd to go out there and act a way which he normally isn't, uh, I really try to do that through training. So he, he produces the feeling without really even knowing he's producing the feeling. Todd admits it's a stretch for him to have an attitude. You know, I, I can't just go out there and, you know, pretend to be arrogant and, and not feel that way. Uh, you know, it, it is a little bit harder that way, but, you know, I just go out and, you know, I try and act a little bit and <laughs> do my best at it. But it is no act that Todd Eldridge is a class act, and the Detroit Skating Club is lucky to have him. You know, this club is, is really good, and, and this is the place that uh, people can come and, you know, people can train really well and become world champions and Olympic champions. Right now, let's go back to Joe Lewis Arena. Hey, Don, you're all talk, man. Are you making any progress out there yet? Don't you worry about it. Uh, I'm going to be just fine, and I am working on it. But first, coming up, Tara's going to give me some more tips for my routine. And you'll meet the Kamikaze crew at the Detroit Skating Club as we go for a ride with the Speed Skaters. We're back in a moment. Detroit's Winning Edge, brought to you by Campbell Soup Champions on Ice, coming to Joe Louis Arena Saturday, May 2nd. Can you feel it? Tom Collins presents Michelle Kwan, Tara Lipinski, Nicole Bovet, Elvis Stoiko, Todd Eldridge, the greatest gathering of figure skating champions ever, Philippe Candelora, Grishuk and Platov, Surya Bonali, the Campbell Soup's tool of champions on ice. Coming to Joe Louis Arena Saturday, May 2nd. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster. Locally presented by Cadillac. Welcome back to Detroit's Winning Edge. It's no secret that the Red Wings have an intense training program when they're not on the ice playing games. And it's a similar story at the Detroit Skating Club. Slide to the other side and lunge last time. Here, the off-ice program is just as vital as the skating itself. Every day, all day, in a room tucked behind rink A, you'll find skaters hard at work on everything from jumps to strength exercises. And there's another kind of workout you can get at the skating club if you're a little bit daring and maybe if you like speed. The Detroit Skating Club is partners with the Wolverine Sports Club, and they got a group there that you could call Detroit's Speed Demon. Group two, crazy stuffers! Go, 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 go! You could call them the bad boys and girls of the Detroit Skating Club. Group three and four inside the track. They are the Wolverine Speed Skaters, and twice a week you'll find them here, living on the edge. I think for me it's defying the laws of physics, uh, going fast and having some amount of control over it, um, leaning in a corner, Touching the ice with your hand at 30 miles an hour. Do you have any idea how fast 30 miles an hour is? I'm on the Zamboni with Al. Hey, Al, how fast can this baby go? Well, we can only get it at about 15, 17 miles an hour on a straight run, and uh, that, we may go too long on that. I need you to crank it up. Come on, I need to get up to about 30. Well, we'll turn on a fuel injectors. We'll get her going. Understood. Hit it out. The worst comparison is that it's roller derby on ice. I'm glad people think it's dumb. 
My friends think it's kind of a wussy sport. A wussy sport? This is not. Yeah. You do not want to be out on the pads, because that's where people crash. I used to be a figure skater, but this is much better. Because in figure skating, you just jump. You're on the ice by yourself. You don't get to push people. You don't get to beat people. But a chance to talk tough is not why these kids and adults sign up. Last weekend, we had skaters go to state championships in Bay City. Congratulations to Amber and Ashley Appholter, state champions. Fourth place finisher, AJ. Put it there, AJ. Give me five. No five today. Congratulations. Our young skaters that are looking into 2002, 2006 for the Olympics, they're all girls. We got, we got a lot of young boys that are learning now and they're coming along good. But the, the really hot crew right now that are hungry to race, there's about six or seven girls. I want to make the Olympic team in 2002. 15-year-old Sarah Bell may be Detroit's greatest hope in speed skating. She just won a junior elite competition, the first big hurdle on the road to Salt Lake City. She wants it, so we're gonna, we're gonna provide all the resources for her to make it happen. One interesting note about Sarah Bell, she got her need for speed from her uncle. His name is Terry McDermott. All he did was win a gold medal in speed skating in the Olympics back in 1964. If hockey is more your speed, the Detroit Skating Club could still be the place for you. Most nights, you'll find players crashing the boards all over this complex. There are women's, men's, and Kiwi teams, which are often looking for new players. There's another team sport taking off at the Detroit Skating Club. It's called precision skating. And you haven't seen anything like this. To describe it would be 12 to 24 skaters that strive um, and practice and rehearse to perform as one. It's a very athletic event. Um, it's very similar to ice dancing in many ways. It's very dangerous. You know, they have 48 blades flying at high speeds. It's the only team event offered to figure skating, which is a very individual sport. In arenas across the country, precision skating is just now coming of age. And already the Detroit Skating Club has one of the best teams around. They're called Team Elon. Over the years, um, always a medal, top, top three medal. Um, we, in 95, won the senior championship. Since 92, they've been selected for international competition, which is, is quite an opportunity for all the girls. Precision skating itself is quite an opportunity for the girls because it allows them to compete as they get older. Jennifer Fries is a perfect example. The 23-year-old is a software engineer for Chrysler. With skating, I hope to eventually get into the Olympics. Hopefully they'll make our sport an Olympic sport in time before I move on to other things. Members of Team Elon range in age from late teens to early 20s. All must juggle their lives with an intense training schedule. In one form or another, each of us is practicing every day for the sport. Skaters with Team Elon spend about 12 hours a week on the ice, but then there's off-ice conditioning that includes ballet and weight training. Right now, they have their sights set on the World Championships in the year 2000, and then there are the Olympics. And the first World Championship will be in Minnesota in 2000. Um, and from there, it would just follow a track to becoming an Olympic event. Um, no one's really got a prediction on a year. Another yeah, so group of girls with Olympic dreams is the novice team at the DSC. Let me ask you this, how long have you guys been skating long? A couple years? Seven years. Seven, 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 seven four. years. Their first goal is to become members of Team Elon. We'll go through the warm-up block and we'll go right through the whole program, okay? Keep it tight, faces on, let's go. can't even line dance, so I know I can't do that, but I do think I can handle a couple of simple jumps and spins and moves on the ice, and after all, I've got Tara Lipinski as my personal advisor. Your move first forward. time on skates? No. Oh, then maybe spin. Spin? <laughs> how about skate, oh, oh, how about skating backwards? What's the, key to skate, what's the key to skating backwards? 
There's no key. You just turn around and you skate backwards. Did you, like, push me? Just push me? Did you do that? <laughs> Okay, so I gotta practice a little bit. That's not a problem. And Robbie, I hope you were paying attention. I hope you were writing some notes, as you said you might be doing. I'll be back with the wings a little bit later on in the show for now. Back to you. Thanks, Don. I am taking a few notes, and I might practice maybe after the show is over. In the meantime, we're gonna be taking a look at Tara Lipinski's life after the Olympics and what she's doing next. We'll also talk with Tara's coach, a man wanted by the skaters around the world, and we'll play Star Search. You'll meet the up-and-coming stars here, skaters who one day could win Olympic gold. Back in a moment. Detroit's Winning Edge, brought to you by the Chevy Malibu, the car you knew America could build. Genuine Chevrolet. Welcome back to the Detroit Skating Club in Bloomfield Hills. If you come here at the right time of day and peek through the glass out onto the ice, you'll see a tiny figure zipping through the crowd. She acts like she's just one of the girls, and she really is, except for one thing. She's the best female skater in the world. For Tara Lipinski, the Detroit Skating Club is something of a sanctuary. You'll still find her practicing here, taking a break from her whirlwind life as America's golden girl. Since the Olympics, Tara, it seems, has been everywhere, in parades, laughing with Letterman, presenting a Grammy, attending the Oscars. And while she's now a millionaire many times over, Tara is showing no signs of slowing down. She's skating now with Campbell Soup Champions on Ice Tour, and she's got her eye on another big prize, her driver's license. Tara will turn 16 on June 10th, and she hopes to celebrate by tooling around in the new Chevy Cavalier given to her by GM. When Tara won the gold in Nagano, you might have seen a man standing beside her looking like a proud father. Well, that was Richard Callahan, Tara's coach and mentor. Richard Callahan, the coach of Tara Lipinski and of Todd Eldridge. He's the one you always see sitting next to Tara Lipinski and Todd Eldridge in the kiss and cry area when the scores come in, giving his prize students last second advice before they take the ice. Tara Lipinski. And Richard Callahan knows what it's like to be in that position. He enjoyed a moderately successful amateur skating career and then turned pro when he was 19. He skated with Ice Capades, where he met his wife Mandy, now also a Detroit skating club coach, and then they went to Holiday on Ice in Europe. He says it was fun, but far from lucrative. I don't think the kids would come out of the locker room today for what I was paid back in, in the 60s. Tired after seven years on the road, the couple returned to Callahan's native New York, where he started coaching ice dancers. When I started, uh, I, I was still a competitive type person, so I was very anxious to get young kids successful as quick as I could. And after one of his couples won a national championship, Callahan had made a name for himself. Then he spotted a 10-year-old Todd Eldridge, and the two have been together ever since. He came to one of my uh, camps in Rochester, New York, for a summer, uh, summer school, summer training camp, and um, then stayed for 16 years. Eldridge followed Callahan as he crisscrossed the country going from one skating club to the next until finally settling here at the Detroit Skating Club five years ago. People say our furniture has been on wheels, but the wheels are off. <laughs> Detroit's been great for me. I've been very successful because of the Detroit Skating Club, so there's no reason to go elsewhere. Tara Lipinski didn't come into the picture until just a couple of years ago. Nicole Bobick, who had a reputation for putting her coaches on ice, had just left Callahan. And at the same time, Tara was looking for a new coach. I would not have taught both girls at the same time. I think, I think some... I think it can be done, but I think it's very important that a person at that level knows they have complete loyalty. The first skater to ever do a triple loop, triple loop combination. Watch the landing right there and the step up in row. She has tremendous uh, natural ability, and, and she was very eager to get better and very structured, just like Todd was. You never had to ask her to be on time or, or, or get back on the ice. So now that Tara and Todd are leaving the nest, at least for a few months while they go out on tour, the 52-year-old Callahan is looking forward to some well-deserved R&R and then finding the next Tara or Todd. I'll teach anybody who loves to skate. I don't care, you know, if it's a 10-year-old in a juvenile division. Um, but if a, a senior lady who had potential to go to Olympics and uh, be a champion, they would, they would have to prove to me that they, they really wanted to do it. Coaches like Richard Callahan are always prowling the ice here at the Detroit Skating Club, looking for stars of the future. 
Who is the next Tara Lipinski or Todd Eldridge? Who has a shot at the Olympics? Among the brightest young stars at the DSC are the pair skaters. Danielle and Steve Hartzell have won the Junior Worlds and a bronze medal at the U.S. Senior Championship. Larissa Spielberg and Craig Joe Wright just took third at the U.S. Junior Nationals. Others to watch include Teresa and Selmy and Mike Adler and Amanda Ross and Mike McPherson. Looking at ice dancers, Jamie Silverstein and Justin Bacaric are up-and-comers. They just took second at the U.S. Junior Nationals. Other hot couples include Naomi Lang and Peter Chernichev and Anna Berry and Christopher Hayes. Among the singles, watch out for Donald Witt, Jamie Klinger, Lindsay Weber, Eric Isaki, and Aaron Pearl. Thanks. We'll certainly be watching. Right now, we have our eye on a star in the making at Joe Louis Arena. All right, Don. This is it. This is your big moment. I gotta tell you, Todd, I'm not worried about anything. You've just provided more motivation. Guys, any last-minute advice for me as I get ready for this uh, big moment? Well done. I got you the best coach you could possibly <laughs> yeah. have. Danny, I don't need a chair. What are you talking about? Sarah's right. good when you have talent, but when you have no talent, <laughs> this is it. Right Sit here. down, huh? Forget this chair. I'm not worried. <laughs> See you, boys. Yeah, way to stay. Thanks, guys. Yeah. 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 You deserve a seat. What do you think? I don't know. Pretty sweet, huh? Just, whoa! <laughs> Work on the side a little bit, but besides that, it was great. Thanks. I appreciate your help in this matter. You should be impressed, Andy. I know, Robbie and Todd, you're probably breathless. You probably can't believe what you just saw. It's all right with me, though. We'll be back in just a moment. When you're busy... So show is now just minutes away. Stay tuned to Channel 7 for all the action. And thanks to the Detroit Skating Club for all the help, hospitality, and one terrific evening. And special thanks to Todd Eldridge, Tara Lipinski, and all the skaters here. From all of us at Channel 7, thanks for joining us, and enjoy the show.